When someone asks me about the house, I say there's three things, three things only. One, spouse buys the other spouse out, gets an appraisal, finds out how much equity is, writes a check, refinance it. Two, the other spouse buys the other spouse out. Three, house gets sold. Cold-hearted world, remember. Um, you know, the house has a lot of emotions, a lot of memories, and you go into the divorce world and boy, it just gets chopped up like a piece of meat. And sometimes people take offense to that. Sometimes people don't understand. They think their house is, you know, uh, so important. And you go in front of a judge and the judge says, well, who wants the house? You want the house? Okay. So if spouse A wants the house and spouse B wants the house, who gets the house? Nobody. It gets sold now, unless you have spouse A who says, I can buy the house and they're, you know, working a, a job that income wise is much less than the other spouse and they have no ability to actually buy the house. So they're just saying, I want to buy the house and if I can't have it, you can't have it. And that's not right. If one spouse wants the house and the other spouse wants the house, the next question is who's got the wherewithal to buy the house. If both spouses have the financial wherewithal to buy the house, that house is getting sold. Nobody's getting it. If one spouse has the wherewithal to buy the house, and the other spouse doesn't, that spouse is getting it. And what, what's really terrible sometimes, uh, terrible because from an emotional standpoint, one side has money, family money, friends, boyfriends, girlfriends, and the other side doesn't. And that person with the money can come in and try to buy the house out from the other person. But three concepts, one person buys the other person out, the other person buys the other person out, or they both want it, they both have the wherewithal, and it's sold.